this year's Book Industry Summit, we will be tackling the trends and best practices in the book publishing industry. This summit will also serve as a platform for you to forge partnerships aimed at increasing the number of books, enhancing book quality, improving book affordability, and widening book discoverability. To start off our session for this day, we have Mr. Anthony Balisi to present the Book Publishing Industry Strategic Plan 2019-2022. to This session will be moderated by Ms. Kalina Bolasco. Mr. Anthony Balisi is the Director 1 of the National Book Development Board and he is in charge of the grants program of the agency. Ms. Karina Bolasco is the Director of the Ateneo de Manila University Press, which under her leadership has been cited Publisher of the Year by the Manila Critics Circle. It was also the Publisher of the Year in 2017 and 2018. Let's all give Ms. Mr. Anthony Balisi and Ms. Karina Bolasco a warm welcome. Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, the strategic plan, uh, I think this was put together middle of this year or last year. Last year, okay. And then it was presented to the board of the National Book Development Board. And then I think fine-tuned some more until its final form uh, or version today that will, should have been presented by the executive director, but he is not uh, available this morning. He was called to Malacanang. So, Anthony uh, Balisi will do the presentation. I think you can, uh, pieces of paper will be distributed and you can write down questions as you listen to, uh, okay, notebooks, not pieces of paper. <laughs> okay, good. And then we will read your questions later and entertain other questions that will be raised after the presentation. So Anthony. Thank you, Mom Karina. So good morning, everyone. So on behalf of our Executive Director, Jerry G. Tison, I'll be reading the presentation prepared by him. Uh, Maayong buntag kanatong tanan. Today, we present to you the results of strategic planning initiative conducted by the National Book Development Board. This strategic planning initiative was undertaken with the twin purpose of, one, reviewing and updating, if found necessary, the country's national book policy, and second, crafting the medium-term National Book Development Plan 2019 to 2022. I believe our stakeholders were provided with advanced copy of the report. So everyone were email. Uh, did, you, did you receive a copy of the report through email? Yes, yeah, yes, yes. So... Some then, so uh, I just uh, I'll just uh, request the secretary to email you the copy of the draft strategic plan. So this pr presentation will be very brief, as you are provided with a copy of report, and it will only focus on key items. So in pers pers in pursuit of the twin purpose given above, this final report presents among others: one, the updated national book policy, and second, the draft version of the crafted national book development plan 2019 to 20. 22. Next slide, please. The National Book Development Board was established through RAA 247, also known as the Book Publishing Industry Act, ratified into law in 1995. The enactment of RAA 247 was a clear demonstration of the government's attention to the important role of books in nation building. The law created the National Book Development Board, which is tasked primarily to formulate and implement a national book policy with corresponding national book development plan geared towards the development of the book publishing industry. The birth of the NBDB was long struggled that started in 1998 in the halls of Congress by two legislators who shared a vision and desire to see the growth of the publishing industry in the Philippines. That remarkable struggle ended in June 1995, when His Excellency President Fidel V. Ramos signed RA-8247 into law. RA-8247 repealed Executive Order 492, Series of 1991, as amended, the law which created the Instructional Materials Development Center under the former Department of Education, Culture, and Sports. Key points of RA-8247 are to create conditions 
conducive for development of development and production of books, ensure access and effective distribution of books, promote reader well-being, and promulgate rules and regulations, and conduct researches and studies. Next slide, please. For the strategic planning initiatives, four priority areas were taken into consideration. First is to ensure an adequate, affordable, and accessible supply of books for all segments of the population. Second is to foster the development of skills of personnel engaged in book publishing through the in-service training programs and formal degree and non-degree book publishing courses in schools. Third, to facilitate a stronger coordination with the other agencies, especially in the education and training sector. And lastly, to give life to the provision on mandatory registration of persons and enterprises engaged in various functions of book publishing industry. Next slide, please. <clears throat> The strategic planning is guided by policies established by a current administration. Primary to this is the National Book Development. Uh, the National Book Development Plan aligns itself primarily with the Philippine Development Plan (PDP) 27 to 2022. Specifically, the NBDP contributes to the promotion of culture and values. That's PDP Chapter 7. Books are repository of knowledge, and Filipino authorship contributes to the promotion of our culture. Next slide, please. Likewise, NBDB also contributes to expanding economic opportunities in industry and services. This was mentioned yesterday by our NETA representative, through Trabajo and Negocio, that's PDP Chapter 9. The book publishing industry, with the facilitation and support services provided by the NBDB and other relevant government agencies, aims to expand the market access of Filipino book publishers locally and internationally. It also aspires to ensure consumers' access to adequate, affordable, and accessible quality books. This twin outcome goal is foremost in our priority agenda of NBDB in the medium term as evidenced by their inclusion as among the indicators that will prove that economic opportunity in the book publishing industry in the country has indeed expanded during the National Book Development Plan period for 2019 to 2022. Next slide, please. Further, Ambition Natin notes that in 2040, all Filipinos will enjoy a stable and comfortable lifestyle, secure in the knowledge that we have enough for our daily needs and unexpected expenses, that we can plan and prepare for our own, for our own and our children's future. Our families live together in a place of our own, yet we have the freedom to go where we desire, protected and enabled by a clean, efficient and fair government. Note that among the, Filipi among the things that Filipinos aspire for in 2040 is that for their children, is that for their children that are, uh, should be college educated. Books and reading materials play a big part in knowledge building and education. If you have noticed, the past three slides I have shown focus on three areas. One is culture and arts, second is trade and development, and the last is education. This shows the NBDB's three-pronged approach to, the, to our publishing sector. It has a creative component, a business component, and an education component. Next slide, please. <coughs> it will be noted that the draft NBDP National Book Policy presented to you is nearly 100% lift from the existing NBDP drafted in 1999. The very minor changes were made were one, updating of institutional names and acronyms. For example, we changed Department of Education, Culture, and Sports to Department of Education. Second, the change from secondary schools to junior and senior high schools. And third, third the use of institutional names, acronym in the next instance. The same name is used after it has been spelled out already in preceding sections or portions of the text. And lastly, a few changes as suggested by the NBDB board chair and members in formulation of certain statements in order to, for them to be more responsive to the real situation in the industry. Next slide, please. Now let me present to you the strategy map for 2019 to 2022. Um, can, can you go back a few more down? Let's start with the core values. Core values is how we define how an organization functions. So we work on the principles of innovation, excellence, and integrity. This I will discuss in the succeeding slide. 
can you flash core values, please? Yes. Next. One click. So mission, uh, mission is what we are mandated to do. This is the proposed mission statement, uh, empowering the Filipino to create, publish, and distribute books for readers worldwide. We want to work for an enhanced and strengthened industry capable of competing worldwide. So how would, you, how would we do this? Next, please. Finance. For the financial aspect, we want exemplary fiscal prudence. So as of now, uh, NBDB has been a uh, Hall of Fame awardee for uh, auditing purposes, uh, accounting and auditing purpose. So uh, in, a, in, in addition to that, uh, we're looking at fiscal prudence to improve on our work. Next is, uh, next please. Next is people and organization. We want to aim for a mandate responsive work for structure. And number two, we want to be professionally competent with a disciplined com commitment. And number three, we also aspire for a, a, a strategic fiscal workspace, a home for NBDB. Next please. For our operational processes, we are moving towards electronic online online based systems as we have to keep up with fast changing technological innovations. If you have observed uh, the current system of NBDB so the registration processes that you have to do it uh, physically, you have to come to our office physically. So we're looking at doing it online so that people away from Metro Manila can have better access to our registration system, registration processes. <clears throat> Next, following international standards, we also aim to be ISO 9001-2015 aligned. So this is still in uh, on the office processes. Next, our core drivers are the key aspect of our operations in order to fulfill our mandate. Uh, this will be formed as our organizational output. So if you've browse to the reports uh, on the uh, on the latter part of the report we have uh, listed tables which list uh, operational activities with outputs and outcomes of course very crucial to our developing our strategy map would be you our stakeholders our mission will always be directed to serving the stakeholders of the publishing industry to serve you better we aim for a robust local publishing industry this we also see to be contributory to the growth of opportunities in the industry and services by way of creating more trabajo and more negocio. <clears throat> Next, please. Ultimately, this will be up to our vision. So what is our vision for the Philippine book publishing industry? So this is the updated vision statement, excellent and affordable books by Filipinos for all. This goes back to what RAA 247 is all about sums up all priority mandates I discussed earlier in one succinct and sharp vision statement. Next, please. <clears throat> Just a little on the core values. What the core values to mean to us? One, innovation. Innovation is being creative in working and thinking, challenging the status quo through continuous improvement. Excellence is the brand of our work and our service, inspired by a passion to consistently deliver only the best. Integrity is our practice of ethical standards, committing to uphold our clients' interests above all. Next, please. Now, what do we intend to do operationally? NBDB was established to provide technical and developmental support to the publishing industry in the Philippines. This is in terms of content development to trade and investment, two promotions. Uh, this is in terms of content development to trade, in, trade and investment promotions and to reader well-being as as, I, as uh, the slide presented earlier, uh, RA 8047 focuses on uh, content production, distribution, and the reader well-being. So, so we have focus, uh, we focus on grassroots capacity building initiatives, investment and trade promotion, incentives and awards, public campaigns, institutional research, and data gathering. This I will discuss in the succeeding slides. Next, please. Grassroots capacity building. These initiatives aim to build and develop skills on content creation and book publishing among different stakeholder groups, especially in the regions. This is undertaken through workshops and seminars on language, literature, publishing, and other related topics. 
We have programs like Buklatan Sabayan, Publishing Courses, the Philippine International Literary Festival, Writing and Illustration Workshop to build up and enhance the skills of our creators. The details of this are in your in the report. So each detail, uh, what do we plan to do from 2019 to 2022 are detailed in the report. Next, please. Investment and trade promotion. From strengthening the creation of content, NBDB now moves along the supply chain towards trade and investment. This opens opportunities for licensing and distribution of Philippine content showcased in domestic and international markets. Next, please. The NBDB provides support to our local publishing sector in terms of participation to international trade events. The Philippines has actively participated in Frankfurter Book Messe, Kuala Lumpur Trade and Corporate Center, International Children's Content Rights Fair in Chiang Mai, Hong Kong Book Fair, Beijing International Book Fair, Asian Festival for, of Children's Content in Singapore, Story Drive Asia in Singapore, and Bologna Children's Book Fair, to name a few. After a 15-year hiatus, uh, the Philippines returned to the Philippine Book Messe in 2015 when it was given a modest booth. Fast forward to 2019, the Philippine stand now boasts of a 120 square meter booth. This is largely from the additional funds provided by Deputy Speaker Lauren Legarda to support the participants from the Philippine book publishing industry in the world's most prestigious book fair. Next slide, please. We also have public campaigns. NBDB promotes a lifelong culture of reading and authorship through the conduct of book industry summit and conventions, storytelling sessions, publications, and social media activities. We value diversity and representation in the publishing community. Likewise, we put extra initiative in reaching out to those who are literacy marginalized communities and sectors. Next slide, please. We disseminate what we do to inform our stakeholders, to inform the public. We do it in print as evidenced by the book watch and we also do it on online through social media uh, platforms. Next slide, please. Uh, we also do research, institutional research and data gathering. A NBDB gathers and analyzes data about the industry. Data are collected through the registration and accreditation of stakeholders. Data collected by other government agencies like the Philippine Statistical Authority are also collected and analyzed. NBDB takes note of major and international, major local and international market factors gleaned from different events. All the information collected and analyzed are made available at the NBDB website and are presented at various conferences and fora. Recently, we disseminated the results of the 2017 Readership Survey. I think copies were distributed yesterday, so each one of you should have a copy of the small booklet on the results of the readership survey. Uh, with this, I end my presentation. Uh, I would like to listen to your insights on the draft strategic plan initiative drafted by NBDB uh, Secretariat and N NBDB Governing Board. Maraming salamat po. Okay. Uh, so, in a way, this is a kind of uh, informal consultation. People can react to the plan that has... Uh, can uh, anybody wants to raise the first question? Because this is the opportunity now uh, to... Because we hear all sorts of feedback to what the NBDB has been doing, right? So, this is our chance now to to discuss and to input so that you can uh, uh, so we can factor in your concerns for example i hear a lot from pepa that the that the nbdb has not been particularly uh, concerned about textbooks i don't know do we have textbooks publishers here yes uh, Questions or what specific concerns that uh, or suggestions so that we can still put it in, no, in the in the plan. Jenna. Hi. Good morning. I'm Jenna. I'm a freelancer. 
Um, it also it was in the slides, Kadina. Um, you mentioned the section four of RA eighty forty seven about the development of skills of personnel. So I'm um, I'm particularly um, antawag dito. Um, I have a desire for editors to be organized in such a way that uh, meron tayong um, continuing skills development. We have courses on that um, every year. My I don't know my convention. Can um, um, I, I, I've, I've emailed about this kay, kay Miss Karila and then kay, kay Miss Flor. Yeah. So um, I just think na gusto ko siyang um, um, i-highlight today para may sama naman siya sa, sa NBDP plan. So I'm hoping na in the future, um, editors can be organized tapos we're given a voice. Kasi um, I know that we have, um, we have a special place of book publishing and we want that to be really acknowledged. Thank you. Or, it's not actually a question, but you can answer to that if you have anything to say. Thank you. No, I think uh, people always say why do that we don't need uh, how come we don't have very good editors the way they have them in the United States, in the West uh, and the, the, the work that they do is extensive even for trade books huh? even uh, here uh, the practice is if an established writer submits a novel, nobody touches it anymore except for copy editing. No? But there, they, the editor sits down with the fictionist, the writer, and suggests uh, maybe you should begin with this uh, scene instead of this. And, I mean, a very detailed discussion of how to improve the novel. And we don't have those kinds of editors here. Um, my initial explanation was that Almost everyone is a writer, so they don't want to spend time improving another person's work when they can write their own, right? Now, for textbooks, the editors are also very, very important. And many of the houses have their own editors, right? Uh, some of the textbook publishing houses have editors per subject area, several editors per subject area. So if you're looking at not just freelance, right? All editors organized from all publishing houses, whether freelance or employed. I think that's a very good idea. Yeah. We should maybe make that one of the first things we do next year. But in terms of training, the BDAP has been organizing uh, specific courses in publishing. Uh, we've done twice. We've done two uh, at the University of the Philippines. And where's, where's the other one? But we're trying to even put them into the curriculum of certain universities who will be open to starting courses in publishing. If you've also browsed to the report sent to you last Tuesday, so uh, we have also included the fellowship grant in the report. So uh, fellowship grant for editors, for translators, for illustrators, and content create, other content creators. So uh, we're looking at this for at year 20, 2021 to 2022. So uh, hopefully it will, it will continue. It will be approved by DBM, and hopefully it will continue in the succeeding years. Uh, what kind of support did... Do, do you want the initiative to come from the National Book Board, or there will be a lead group that will organize it? can initiate it, yeah, or to maybe organize until you're on your own, yeah, okay. Any other suggestion related to the editor's uh, organization? And sometimes editors are not just editors. <laughs> you're doing other things also, you know, in, in your company, so it doesn't matter. You know? Okay, any other suggestions or comments on the plan? What about my question about textbook publishers? The textbook publishers, can you uh, raise your concerns if you feel like the NBDB is not doing enough for textbook publishers? Textbook publishers. That's what I informally hear no, from, from others. Yes. You are from? Uh, Gemma Publishing. Gemma? Yeah, Gemma Publishing. I don't know if uh, this is uh, related, but... The, there are there are now studies on the 
on the continuous viability of the K-12 uh, curriculum. And uh, I think it's already in the, in the Congress for the study. We have already made some representations on uh, the inclusion of uh, technology, computer, computer subjects on the uh, K-12 uh, primary, primary education because we feel that uh, the computer technology subjects are not just for the high school, but also for the primary. It's a continuous uh, education. Well, some private, as far as uh, we, what we have, uh, is are also uh, doing the K-12 curriculum. They say that uh, it's DepEd uh, mandated. So we experienced some, uh, some uh, short uh, sales on computer, computer books because of the K-12 curriculum. I don't know if uh, National Book would have a, uh, a say on, uh, on the uh, revision or the addition of uh, computer technology in the, in the K-12 primary education. Yes, some schools, although yeah, also some schools are also trying to imitate already the K-12 curriculum. Of course, the parents would say that uh, it's not already required in the, in the K-12 curriculum, but we already represented that uh, I think learning computer is not just a, an... Papa, maybe because it's almost like a given. I mean, you know, kids now are born with the That's skill, what they say usually. skill to use it. Everything is downloadable and everything no, is... Uh, meron ng... Uh, ano na lang yung... Wish, ano na lang siya. But, uh, well, of course... Parang owido, tingin mo, kailangan na, oh, professionally... But, uh, of course, we believe... <laughs> oh, we feel that uh, it is a course track from the, from the beginning, you know. Like learning uh, guitar, pwede ka naman magtu matuto ng ano, mga instruments ng widow. Eh. But uh, of course, better kung medyo systematize, systematize ang iyong pag-aaral. Eh. Do do, is there anyone from the Department of Education, aside from the NBDB people, because we're under the Department of Education, who has knowledge of the development of the K-12 curriculum, Ani? Forcing it and people are But DepEd does, re from what I know, I am not a DepEd employee, but they do review the curriculum um, regularly every year. The, the, there, there are still ongoing review, um, review efforts right now. But as for the inclusion of technology, because it was brought up in this consultative session, we shall bring it up with our um, DepEd counterparts. You can count on us uh, for that right now they're just enforcing K-12 to and already there's so so much reaction uh, so I don't know how soon or immediately they can revise but we will put that, uh, we will input no? in our, uh, because in our letter to them how come it is a worldwide uh, thing already to to use uh, technology but instead of uh, well uh, having it as part of the primary curriculum Parang na, nawala pa sa curriculum from grade 1 to 3 and from grade 4, 5, 6 uh, technology is just a part of the TLE uh, subject. And, uh, we, will, we will put that in, in our suggestions. Good, good morning, I'm Cora Sapo from Abiba Publishing House. So... One of the general policies that you have shown are that NBDB and DepEd will establish an efficient textbook procurement program. Uh, can we be enlightened with this? Uh, how is NB, uh, NB do, NBDB doing with the procurement program? That until now, it's quite, or it's not not quite, still magulo. 
uh, well, NBDB is collaborating with BRF Learning Resources in terms of uh, content development. So yeah. we're providing um, capacity building initiatives for one for teachers and uh, in public schools, uh, grade school, uh, and um, junior and senior high school. So, and in terms of procurement. Uh, well, the only thing that I can share with you is that prior to you having to join the bidding process, you have to be registered with NBDB. Yes. And uh, in terms of how the DEPED procurement goes, uh, that's beyond uh, the operations of the National Book Development Board. So I cannot answer for the... I'm checking. Uh, as far as the, the board is concerned, the only thing we've uh, discussed was that the author's grants, uh, we al allocated several categories for textbooks to help, uh, to help writers finish textbooks for the new curriculum. We, uh, part of the grants, because you might, have, you might have this perception that the grants are just for literature or for research for academic scholarly books. No, we need some categories uh, specific to textbooks uh, as required by the new curriculum. So that's, that's the one. That's it. Support, 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 support to all the textbook, production. textbook development and production. But in terms of procurement, did we say procurement, evaluation, where is NB, what is NBDB's role when it comes to uh, textbook evaluation? Uh, textbook evaluation? Yeah. No, no, that's why evaluation. Yeah. Uh, we, have, we have not done, I remember that before under... Andrea Pashon Flores, Attorney Flores, they were doing, they were issuing a seal, a quality seal for textbooks, but that was not mandatory. Anybody who wants their textbooks vetted and to carry that seal, they would submit to the NBDB and NBDB would hire uh, reviewers to do that. No? But after, after, I don't think it was sustained, yeah, it was no? Sustained. It wasn't sustained. Uh, in terms of procurement, uh, um, I, let's not say it's not procurement. How about a uh, textbook call evaluation? That's their prerogative, the Department so of NBDB Education. So NBDB has no role in no. the evaluation? No, we, we don't. As of now, right, right now, now not, right as now. Of now yeah. And in the 2019-22 plan, it's also not included. As, ah. Yes. But, but what NBDB does uh, in partnership with DepEd is that we train people, we conduct trainings in the regions, we train the school teachers, we provide um, resource speakers, like we provide sport, uh, resource speakers on illustration. We, uh, we usually uh, uh, invite ang ilustrador ng kapataan to provide sessions on illustrations for textbooks. And we also invite um, editors, content uh, creators, to provide capacity building initiatives to our public school teachers. Uh, that is uh, in so far as the learning materials, production of learning materials is concerned. DepEd calls it learning materials. So that's the uh, material produced by DepEd. Uh, that's why Nanny, Chair Nanny, always laments the fact that every time the headline is about erroneous textbooks, it is the book board that's being told, what are you doing about it? Why did you allow this to happen? But we have nothing, nothing really to do with the, with the evaluation and the decision to purchase of uh, the Department of Education right now. I don't know if it's in our mandate in the law, RA 8047, if we can uh, go there. Because strictly speaking, the Department of Education is like any other school buying their books, right? And the only thing we can do is maybe give guidelines, but we cannot uh, interfere with the way they, they, they decide when to evaluate, what titles to call for, and what finally they decide to buy, right? They're like any school buying, except that they're the biggest buyer, and they affect the entire public school system. No? So in that sense, yeah, I think there should be more public 
uh, maybe not intervention, but at least we should be able to say something about it. But that's the that's the process. They issue their call. They they have their own evaluation committee. They hire people also from different institutions, and then they decide what to buy. Sometimes they just buy titles and write the right to print the title, and they do their own printing. They bid out the printing, and they print for all the 22 million public school students. Oh, yes. So, good morning, Mr. Ray Tamayo from Seven Eyes Production. Uh, my question regarding, uh, kay Sir Anthony, regarding naman po sa mga indie publishing natin, uh, namamonitored ba ito ng uh, development board regarding yung mga authors natin na nag indie Dahil the reality is, lalo na sa mga young writers, hindi agad sila nakaka-penetrate sa mga big publishing company kasi walang pangalan, hindi pa nananalo ng palangka, or uh, ganun situation. Ngayon may program ba yung uh, development board regarding young writers natin? Ah, yun lang po. Uh, when it comes to programs for uh, aspiring writers, uh, upcoming writers, upcoming content developers, we do have programs. That's yun yung binagit kanina na publishing courses. Na where for this year and last year, it was focused on deaf ed public school teachers. But uh, we can again in 2020 probably open it to the general public. In 2017, this was open to the general public. So we have uh, courses on editing courses on writing, courses on translation. This is in partnership with PTAP. Uh, and when it comes to indie publishers, uh, like for example, uh, one issue is uh, the acquisition of ISBN, which was also discussed yesterday. And BDB is in dialogue with the National Library of the Philippines. I think uh, we have a representative of NLP here right now. Is Carmelo, Mr. Carmelo here in the room right now? No, so he's not. So. Uh, we're working it out for uh, indie publishers to uh, ease, in terms of ease of acquisition of ISBN, and also in terms of the National Book Awards, um, uh, the Manila Critics Circle have uh, adjusted, have revised their guidelines so as to include uh, the indie publishers which don't have an ISBN. Uh, so the guidelines for the National Book Awards for this year uh, did away with the requirement of ISBN. So that's one way of uh, uh, getting in the independent publishers. So I think I mentioned this yesterday. When Shela Mendoza was the, uh, was the executive director, I cannot uh, pinpoint, uh, really remember, recall the years, but uh, when our number of titles based on IB ISBN was about 9,000 plus, she said that those without ISBNs, they were able to monitor by asking indie publishers, was about 2,500. So our total then should have been about 11,500. And as we saw yesterday in the readership in, in the chart, the books in print with ISBNs is going down. But my suspicion is that the one without ISBNs might be going up. That's why ours was uh, the, the ones in print or the ones uh, with ISBNs. Uh, is going down, has been going down. So we will have to have a mechanism to more accurately monitor the output of the, of the indie publishers and to improve the, hopefully, the national library system of issuing ISBNs. There are also, he didn't say it yesterday, but there are also separate ISBNs for PDFs. PDFs can now be circulated, right? So... That's a separate ISBN. And uh, in addition to what Ma'am Karina says, uh, uh, NBDB is also working with uh, uh, the people behind BLTX. That's one big indie yeah. group. And uh, two weeks ago, uh, NBDB was at Iloilo for the Iloilo Mega Book Fair. So that's also composed of indie publishers from Western Visayas. Five more questions. Parang ano to? Ngayon na sabihin or forever hold your peace. <laughs> Wala nang madidinig na kung ano nung mga. Yes.
Good morning, I'm Sophie Herong, Abiba Publishing House. Uh, yes, sir, I think it was you yesterday who reported on the, on the outcome of the registration of um, authors, textbook authors, at the NBDB. But anyway, it was mentioned, it was presented yesterday. Um, it, I think one of the challenges of uh, the National Book Development Board is that authors are not really actively, consciously um, um, registering um, as members. Um, speaking for Abiba Publishing, um, back in, I think, 2015, when the NBDB started uh, building up its database of authors or textbook writers and even um, other content creators like translators and even textbook um, illustration artists, um, we submitted, we encouraged our authors in Abiva to submit their uh, registration forms, fill out and submit their registration forms because at that time, it was offered for free. Wala pong bayad. And then thereafter, I think when NBDB was able to already build its database of uh, content writers, none was heard from, from the board um, because uh, it was no longer uh, specified what what benefits will, will the authors get out of um, registering as members, especially since after that, um, you began charging fees, right? Registration fees of, I think, 50 pesos or 100 pesos. So our authors, at least most of them, are asking, why pa? <laughs> Bakit pa? Ano ba yung makukuha namin dyan? So I think that that alone um, may be one of the reasons why there is a very low turnout of registrants in your uh, in NVDB since um, it is an annual an annual thing, right? So can you just enlighten us? Ano po yung benefits ng authors aside from the grants? Of course, the grants kasi um, subject to a lot of requirements pa yan eh. But other than that, ano pa po? Uh, for this year, it's 888 as presented by Sherry. Yes, it's possible also. Yes. Uh, let me give response. One, first, in terms of registration, and second, in terms of incentives. So in terms of registration, yes, we do charge, NBDB charges a, a minimum, a small amount, a very small amount of 400 pesos for individual uh individual uh, content creators but we at times we this this registration fee is waived especially when we have big events like MIBF uh, festivals. festivals yeah and yeah like two weeks ago uh, we went to Western Visayas Iloilo and we encouraged authors to register there at the uh, Iloilo mega book fair and uh, fees were waived during that period so but but yeah, renewable so every year. Renew yes, so yes. But for example, if you want to uh, register uh, during the MIBF period, that's for fee. If you want to renew for the next year, MIBF period again. So th again, that's that's for fee. So. <laughs> uh, the benefits we have uh, several benefits. Uh, one. Uh, you will get information on our free training, so capacity building initiatives. Uh, one, like the publishing courses I discussed earlier. And yeah, they're free. Uh, they're free. Yeah, they're free. So uh, the first to get the information are registered stakeholders. So we do email blast. And second, we give out uh, grants, like we give out the National Book Development Trust Fund. So. Uh, all registered authors are el eligible for this uh, grant, and we also have the book watch. Book watch. Uh, <laughs> yes. Uh, we also have uh, for enterprises. We have uh, tax holiday uh, incentives, 
So like the uh, tax and duty-free importation of raw materials, so you can avail of that. And the uh, other one with the BOI that was discussed yesterday, uh, that's for the enterprises. Uh, and uh, for individuals, we also have um, the National Book Award. So again, uh, this is part of the incentives we give out to, to our registered uh, stakeholders. Maybe... NCBA, ah, the National Children's Book Awards, ah. and the grants. Yes. What, what are you? What is your idea? What else do you think? Sure. Sorry. Yeah, maybe um, in your website, because um, it is so um, sorely lacking. It is yeah. so sorely absent in your website. A, maybe you can um, dedicate a section or a page in your website for the authors and and my appeal lang sana is um, to target both the the textbook authors and, and the uh, trade, trade yes. book writers no para alam din nila yes uh, thank you for i think you are doing sir the email blasts that you mentioned but that is directed to the publishing companies not individually to directed. registered authors. I think you already have the database, right? Yes, yes, yes. I think the writers, the content writers, even illustrators will appreciate uh, hearing directly from the National Book Development Board because kami po, like sa Abiba, our experience is that we, we do disseminate your email but hindi ganun ka-encouraging yung kanilang responses because um, yun nga, hindi ganon ka intindi ano yung mga benefits for renewal. Okay. Uh, thank you for that, Miss Sophie. So, we'll, uh, uh, we'll do our part to improve on the website and uh, to improve on our dissemination process. Uh, I think I see a question from Miss Gwen. Hello, good morning. Uh, I remember a few years back there was a suggestion because there are tax incentives for enterprises. So, a um, few years back, it was brought up that perhaps uh, incentives could also be given to individual authors because you know how much, for example, for royalties, royalties here for authors are pitiful, to say the least. And, you know, um, some authors, they're told by their publishers that they have to register as businesses in order for them to to be issued royalties. Now they have to have a certificate, ganyan. and then, you know, when you register as a business, you have to apply with BIR and give monthly reports to BIR whether you earn something or not. So this is tedious for authors who most of them only, they write as, you know, they're not day jobs, they're not full-time writers. So I remember that was one of the pain points of many of the authors and they were suggesting that perhaps the NBDB could find a way to give incentives or at least help them uh, help them go around go through the process of becoming legitimate you know, as they're applying with the BIR etc just giving them information on this would be a big help Diba? Yesterday, we had the uh, attorney Abbott from the Bureau of Internal Revenue, and that came up, and he said it's not necessary. It is not required for authors to issue receipts when they receive their royalties. So, but it depends on who is there, where you're uh, filing your tax, and he was suggesting that you put, uh, you should have paper trail, you complain, you ask for information, you follow up, or you bring a lawyer with you so that it becomes, you know, clear to... Uh, it, but the, the person who raised this issue was a publisher, so a publisher can afford a lawyer. But if you cannot, then you formalize your complaint. Oh, while we was here, it was her boss who mentioned it yesterday, her mom. Hi po, Ms. Gwen. So, problem din po namin yan as publishers. So, um, as a publisher, uh, when BAR examined us, they, they were also asking us, uh, nasa na yung mga resibo ng mga, ng mga authors nyo? So, they were ready to give us penalties uh, for not issuing receipts. And they were like, and my mom is a, uh, uh, was, is an accountant. 
so um, nilaban niya. And she was able to defend the fact that, you know, um, since it's passive income, it's final, it's final tax, uh, the tax is being paid, pero bakit pinahihirapan ng gobyerno yung documentation on the part of the content creators who receive royalties. So, um, the NBDB a few months back had a Kapian session with the Pasig RDO naman po of BIR. And they said something different from what was said yesterday. Sabi nila, kailangan daw ng OR kahit ano, kahit na passive income siya. So, ayan, naloka po kami lahat. And then yesterday, they said, um, hindi kailangan. So, um, the, the representative of NBDB yesterday, uh, si Ryan Esteban, he suggested that uh, we can request BIR to issue a circular. So, para maklaro na talaga, ito yung pamumukha natin sa mga examiner na hindi kailangan ng OR mula sa mga, sa mga content creators who receive royalty. So, um, it's not just a few people having problems with this. We know that um, some, I know it's like really bad on some publishers, I hear about it, that they make it a reason not to release their royalties um, and at the same time, um, may problems din na iniipit yung mga publishers na sila naman mapapenalty kung walang mabigay na OR. And so, what we can do is, um, we can work with the NBDB to also um, request the BIR for that, uh, for that circular para talagang maklaro na na wala na naman tayo talagang problema. We're just doing what we're doing as a, as a publishing house. E, not, um, regular expense naman talaga, e necessary expense, ang royalties sa, sa ating mga publishers. Yan po. Thank you. Thank you, Wally. Any more uh, issues? We'll think of ways if you have suggestions as to how we can give more incentives to individual content creators, whether writers or illustrators, please write us or, uh, yeah, or raise it here. Any other concerns with the NBDB? One last question before we move to the next session. Okay, so, uh, don't you have concerns about textbook uh, publishers, Gwen? I think you're more privy to what textbook publishers are saying, reacting to NBDB's uh, priorities. Wala. That what? That textbook publishers are... No, because we cannot, if it, in terms of acquisition, purchase, Evaluation, you've, you've made your point, but we will try to dialogue with them, but we're not involved there. Yeah. So anything else? Yes, Wally. The NEDA representative yesterday mentioned that there was an e-commerce roadmap that they were working on, and they would also like to involve the NBDB in terms of that. But um, his focus was from more... Yes, the guy from NADA. His focus was more on um, the introduction of a third telco company or like maybe more telco companies to increase the bandwidth because he was more concerned about kung mabaga lang internet, hindi makakapag, say, uh, hindi makapag download ng ebook. Um, I think it's okay to, um, to also tackle that. About, but... Um, for when he mentioned the e-commerce roadmap, na isip ko po, um, if you check um, e-books on the, the section of Lazada shopping, there and I can't really say that they are, well, they're shady. Let's just say that they're shady because there are some e-books that go for just two pesos, and these are like from the big five uh, companies. Um, uh, publishers uh, internationally. So, baka mas yun po ang pwede natin pagtuunan ng pansin in terms of the e-commerce roadmap. Uh, there's, uh, there might, baka mahuli, is, are we being recorded? Um, yes. <laughs> oh no! Yes. Uh, there might be something shady going on because, you know, um, two pesos, why don't you just give it for free, right? So um, anyway, it, it becomes a problem for a lot of publishers. We create this um, mentality that books are that cheap. Paano naman yung uh, mga um, actual 
licensed distributors, if you compare the prices, bakit iba yung ganyang kababa yung price ng ibang? And I think it's coming from the fact that um, in some e-commerce sites, um, they don't require the like proper documentation of their businesses. Kahit hindi ka legitimate business, they are able to get on the platform. So, bakang mas yun po ang dapat um, pagtrabahuhan ng NBDB and NEDA. Maybe not NEDA, but NCIP, the Intellectual Property Office also. Okay. Or, uh, you know, it could also come from the fact that uh, you, people have this perception that anything that's online is free, right? Because of the music and the movies. And that's exactly why uh, maybe also the, the e-book commerce or sale, uh, sales uh, kind of plateaued. Uh, a world, uh, Forbes magazine said that, and it's not even a fraction of the print because they, they will not buy an ebook for $9 or nine, not even $5, right? Uh, so maybe that was an attempt to, I'm not, I don't know, no, but maybe it's an attempt to slowly escalate or, uh, you know, the pricing start with something that's almost free and then go up. But I know that Lazada, for example, Ceres Dorio's experience was a columnist at the Inquirer. She asked for a book, The Sympathizer, by the Vietnamese uh, writer, which is, I'm sure, being sold now in bookstores for over 500 pesos. And Lazada found a used book and delivered to her at 70 pesos. But it's a used book. I mean, they're being transparent about it, whether they got it from a book okay or somewhere. But they sourced it and sold it. And delivered. So, I don't know. That could also be an upside in terms of other ways of distribution because we cannot also, also rely fully on mga brick and mortar stores. So, we also have to look at other ways of uh, distributing. So, we keep our minds open, but we'll look into that. And maybe we can also look at how the film industry. Uh, did away with uh, pirated CDs and DVDs. So when Netflix and iFlix came in, bumaba yung, ano, bumaba yung uh, bumibili ng mga pirated DVDs and uh, pirated CDs. So maybe we can think of an uh, innovative uh, platform for us to uh, para ano, ma-discourage natin yung consumers to buy uh, the other stuff that are sold on Lazada and Shopee. And on that note, but please, uh, where can they write NBDB anytime they have uh, feedback to where? Uh, help desk at nbdb.gov.org. Anything, that PH, okay, yeah. Okay, so that ends this session. Uh, the next session will be on university presses. So.